Trading 212 blew up in 2020 as the UK's fastest growing investment broker. This led to a lot of speculation about the future and the safety of Trading 212 as an investment platform. Not only that, some of the similar American brokers have struggled during 2021 as investors have exited the market and it's meant that there's less fees and trading available to make any money off. We overdid it on hiring and spending. The costs have gotten out of control if you talk to investors. And now I need to know if Trading212 is having similar issues because the evidence says it should be. My name's Paul and in 2019 I started investing with Trading212 and I do my best to make myself feel safe that Trading212 is taking care of my money properly. I try to do as deep a dive as I can and then record it here to help me make sense of it all. I do the same due diligence, maybe even more with Trading212 that I do with my normal everyday stocks. And today I have their yearly accounts and there's some good stuff and some worrying stuff. I'm amazed how many people own stocks. The sucker's going up. I've got to warn you now that this could be a long one. There's a lot of stuff to go through here. So if you want to see the short summary, just go to this part of the video and you can see my opinion and whether I'm keeping my money in trading 212. But first, disclosure. I do this research because I want to make sure that Trading212 is the right place for my money. I have my life savings invested with Trading212 and other than that, I have no association with them whatsoever. The only money I sometimes get from Trading212 is from the free shares that I get when somebody signs up through the link in the description below. It's a link that anyone can share with their friends if you have a Trading212 account and if you get someone to sign up to Trading212 through your link, you and them get a free share up to to 100 pounds. So if you're thinking about signing up to Trading212 through this video, then please feel free to click the link in the description below and get your free share up to 100 pounds. But I'm going to warn you now that I'm going to be very honest about Trading212 in this video and you should do your own due diligence on your stockbroker and remember in investing you can always lose money in all sorts of ways. If we're clear, let's get to the statements. Okay, so this is the Trading212 Group Limited statements. This is the overall holding company of all of Trading 212's entities. So Trading 212 has in this entity, the Trading 212 UK Limited company, the Trading 212 Limited company that's registered in Bulgaria, the Trading 212 Markets Limited company registered in Cyprus. And I'm actually gonna go have a visit to this site sometime soon and see if I can get in there and see if it's just a shell company. I'm pretty sure it is and most of the companies assets are moved through either the United Kingdom or Bulgaria and of course this trading 212 Europe which is registered in Germany that one of course is being closed I think that's a tax thing it's also worth remembering that these dates only go up to the 31st of December 2021 unfortunately limited liability companies in the UK do post their earnings about a year late that's because it's not a publicly traded company but we do still get a lot of information about trading 212 from these accounts it's also regulated by the FCA, so it has to include a little bit more information, I believe. And we can see on a year-on-year -year basis, revenue was 30 million in 2019, it was 124 million in 2020, and it's grown again to 139 million in 2021. So this company over the past three years has grown quite significantly. And they state again, profit after tax has improved from 7 million to 10 million, quite a small jump in comparison to the 73 million of profit that they gained in 2021. That, I can't deny, is extremely positive. They are both growing on their revenue and their earnings. That is, however, in a great year. They've also changed up their management team. They took on the new CEO, Mukid Chowdhury, in 2021. I think it was May. And Mukid himself has added a CFO, a new CFO, and also a new chief of operations who has worked quite heavily with Mukid in the past so Mukid seems to be bringing over a team that he's very well used to which is largely a good thing I suppose but I have no real information on how good these guys perform because they are quite small time managers as it were much bigger than me obviously but I just can't find too much information on them in number five they've also hired a lot in the UK I think they've grown to about 70 people this may be a good thing and a bad thing we have to look ahead into their accounts but considering the layoffs that are going on in the tech sector at the moment 
particularly in Robinhood and Coinbase. This could be something that comes for Trading212 as well, and they could be letting some of these people go. They may have already. But considering there's only 70 people in this small company, and let's face it, most of them are customer service staff who are batting off Wall Street betters who've lost all their money on CFD trading. You fucking hell! It's very possible that they will keep most of these people on board. Trading212, like every other company that's issuing financial statements, has to outline their possible risks, mainly for the customer in this one, but also to their individual shareholders, their private shareholders. It highlights that it's betted big on mobile technology where a lot of the other investment companies in the UK haven't quite gone that way, or indeed set up anything even half as good. And to be fair, I support that. I think Trading212's user interface is easy easily the best one out there. I've tried Hargreaves Lansdowne, I've tried a little bit of free trade and wasn't really into that. But Trading212, to me, has always been the easiest and, and the best one out there. And perhaps the most important risk, especially to retail traders like me, especially in a downturn, is the liquidity risk. Liquidity risk is how quickly they can get your money out and if they're able to pay for your shares to buy and sell them back. To keep my money safe, the FCA requires Trading212 to keep my money in segregated accounts. That means it's in accounts that they can't get a hold of and they can't get to the money and use that for any debts or buying maybe some houses in the Bahamas. The accounts look as expected, nearly 139 million in revenue, up from 124 million. The final profit for the year is nearly 73 million and that's a massive jump again from 10 million. There's obviously a lot of money that's been saved here and we have to look a little deeper into their accounts to see how they've just made this massive jump in profit because it isn't from the revenue they've only made 14 million more revenue so they've obviously made some cuts somewhere in here that has allowed them to make a little bit more profit one thing i didn't like about this and is a little bit worrying is that trading 212 seems to have taken on some debt they seem to have taken on 7 million in debt in 2021 trading 212 has usually and quite famously told us that they have no debt and that for any company any stock that I would buy is a huge plus. It's very hard to go bankrupt when you've got no debt. The question will be for what reason have they taken on the debt? How long are they gonna need it? And can they pay it off really as soon as they can? Hopefully they won't need to take on any more and we might get onto that in a little while. But this is the first olive green flag. It's not quite green, but it's also not quite a yellow flag. It's, it is debt, lots of companies have debt, and it's not that much debt, especially in comparison to how much they're earning. It's certainly nothing in comparison to how much cash they have. So while it is a bit of a worry that they've taken on debt, maybe unnecessarily, it's still not that bad, because that gives me that extra feeling of safety as a customer of a small finance company. Trading212 also very nicely breaks down its expenses. Staff costs have actually doubled from 2020, and I should have expected that when they said they increased their headcount to 70. So where in these accounts have they managed to make 60 million in cash? Well, it looks like it's on their advertising and marketing section. Training212 spent 62 million in advertising and marketing in 2020. There were bus campaigns, there were television campaigns, YouTube campaigns all over the place for Training212. And I would say my free share count accounts for about 60 million of that marketing campaign. <laughs> and in 2021, they actually only spent 3 million on advertising marketing. God knows where that was. It was probably in the middle of Europe somewhere. So that's where they've made the cut. So next year, although I haven't seen too much advertising and marketing from Trading212 here in the UK, uh, they've got to be spending it on something. So I expect that number to go up in 2022. And maybe when the market starts to change its course from a downward trajectory, that is when Trading212, Hargreaves Lansdowne, all of the others start to spend a lot more money on investing adverts and things like that. It's very telling though that they were able to spend 60 million less on advertising and still make more revenue. All this of course while Trading212 was completely closed to new users. I just can't believe they did it and still made this much money. In March 2021, Trading212 introduced a very controversial little fee. This is called the FX charge, where it charged a little bit of money for you to buy stocks from overseas. Essentially, it costs a little bit of a fee to transfer currency from pounds to dollars. And Trading212 in March of 2021 made the decision to pass that on to the customer. That has obviously made a little bit of a difference and is included in their revenue breakdown. Also, the share lending service, which is another big revenue maker 
maker for the investment side of the company has been included in the revenue as well. We don't know how much they don't break that bit down. Naughty, naughty trading 212. Another really interesting nice to know was how trading 212 breaks up its revenue into the areas that it covers. United Kingdom is well in front there with 94 million from the United Kingdom, 43 million coming from Bulgaria alone. That's I think mainly at CFD area. And Cyprus only a little bit because trading 212 was ultimately closed during the time that they moved 14% of their customers from the UK to the EU. So Cyprus is trading 212 who's EU center, which personally I think is a huge growth area for Trading212. Again, we're not gonna see these numbers and how this is growing until way into the future next year, probably December, October in 2023. And finally, one of the most interesting parts, which they put on page 51, the very last page and the second to last section, which is their segregated client funds. This section shows how much client money there is versus how much client stock there is. These three lines seem to show significant growth in trading 212 over the past two years with 298 million in cash in segregated cash accounts for trading 212 and as of 31st of december 2021 trading 212 held over two and a half billion of client assets that's the actual shares that people are buying in trading 212 and i believe they are held with interactive brokers they're held in a completely separate account so trading 212 can't get them to send the money elsewhere to say argentina and of course go off and play league of legends with it what would be very interesting to compare now is how much these assets are worth currently. Has the market gone down so much that it's reduced the value of these assets or have people been buying into the market and increasing those assets in trading to one too? I would be very interested to find out exactly what this number is right now. So overall, what's my opinion of trading to one too and will I be keeping my money in it? And the answer is yes. For now, Trading212 has proven itself to be, over the past three years, extremely profitable and growing in revenue. It's also growing assets and now it's open to new customers. There's going to be even more assets flooding in, hopefully. Trading212 appears to be unique here in the UK and the US in that it's made itself profitable even though it doesn't use profit for order flow, which is obviously how Robinhood makes its money in the US. And it currently doesn't need a premium service or to charge for shares like all of the other companies in the UK do. However, it still relies quite heavily on contracts for difference, which is a ethically ambiguous way of making money out of its customers. I mean, if these results aren't proof that short-term traders lose a lot of money, I, I don't know what is. It's very clear that most short-term CFD traders still lose a lot of money. And in turn, obviously that's extremely profitable for trading 212. CFD of course does have its benefits because it's an up and down system. Market downturns are inherently caused by investors getting out of the market. That means outflows of assets from trading 212. That means less to share lend. That means less FX fees. It's all likely to cause less revenue. But with CFD, you can make money on the downside in theory. Most people don't, and I guess that could still be really profitable for trading 212. And I have to be very clear here that these results only go to the end of December in 2021. This is the exact peak of our latest stock market bubble. That means all of these results have come from a very, very profitable bull market. Trading 212 stopped taking on clients in March and only just started taking clients back in June of 2022. So there is a lot that's happened between the end of these results to this day and it will change i'm almost certain of it it will change the results of trading 212 the only benefit is that of speculative fintech companies the downturn did start in august of 2021 so there's three or four months there where trading 212 still made a lot of profit even though some of its counterparts in the us didn't make anything at all. Other investment companies here in the UK, like Hargreaves Lansdowne, have also lost a lot of revenue in 2022. This is due to the downturn of the market and investors not wanting to invest as much anymore. Robin Hood has had to lay off 23% of its staff, something that Trading212 might have to do as well. But Robin Hood grew way too quickly. It just shot over the mark. Trading212 seems to have been a lot more reserved, a lot more careful in its risk, and hasn't taken on too many clients when it did didn't have the infrastructure. So I'm quite happy there that Trading 212 doesn't appear to have overreached too much. 
2022 is going to be a real test for investment companies in the UK and trading 212 itself. But for now, with the current facts that I've got, I'm quite happy to trust Trading212 with my life savings still. Next year will be that year where Trading212 has gone through a serious test and we'll be able to tell if Trading212 is really here for the long term or not.